I'm born ready. Let's go. Dude, there it is. So let's go. <laughs> have you guys ever been so interested in like what it takes to actually sell? I mean, it's a thing that I naturally suck at. And regardless of like how many times I feel like I, I could get better, I might not be the best. However, Today might change that because I've got an old friend who taught me sales initially, and then I just digressed after that, uh, is on the show today, Scott Fleming. So Scott, are you really ready to drop some bombs with us today? Let's go, baby. Okay, boom. Welcome to Conversion Marketing Radio, uncovering the secrets of how to convert your dream clients into paying customers. If you're here to learn about maximizing conversions for your business without wasting money on vanity results, consider subscribing to this podcast. And now, here's your host, Ben Wilson. Welcome back to Conversion Marketing Radio, guys. I am so excited for today's show. So Scott Fleming, um, we go way back, actually. He's a guy, if I ever say the word absolutely, he's the one you can thank for that because Scott ingrained that word into my mind. So. Uh, he's a sales expert, I mean, just natural at sale, uh, at selling, and literally can dominate any sales industry. Now, he's a guy that you wanna listen to because he's not the t like the standard sales guy. Because the thing that I noticed about Scott is he's laid back, he's very cool about it, and he's not pushy. He just knows how to phrase the things correctly so that it's enticing to buy. And I know this because I've witnessed it firsthand, door to door to door to door, and he's just, just raking it in and no one felt the pressure. It was it was insane to watch it. So I'm excited to see if we can uh, if we can kind of pull that out of him today. Um, Scott, uh, give me a little bit about your your background. I know you uh, you've been to South Africa, you've got a business going, um, but you are also the VP of sales of a company called Nozani Nozani. Is that right? So you can correct you me it. on that one. Um, no worries. Take me take me back a little bit though. So how did you get into selling? I know your brother, I mean, he's he's a freaking expert too. That guy can sell from sitting on a porch. <laughs> and that's yeah. a true story. Yeah. He's legit. Um, going way back, I think it's just ingrained in our genes, right? Um, I, I think my earliest memories of selling, I, uh, I, I had a school project, second grade, we had to, to make a one of those worm farm things. You had a bunch of dirt, you stuck the worms in. Okay. And I thought, once the project was over, how can I monetize this? And I, I went out door to door in, in the neighborhood and I sold worms to old ladies in my neighborhood. Oh I made like 12 gosh. bucks as a, uh, what, how old was I, eight, nine years old. So it's, it's always been there and, and that passion. And like you said, I love selling, but not in the pushy way, um, in, in a very laid back, chill, logical manner, utilizing questions and helping people to sell themselves. And I think that's the most effective way to do it. Dude, you're you're absolutely a natural at it. I mean, like that first that that summer, boy, did I suck. I still suck. Like I am not a door to door salesman. I will be a hundred percent vulnerable and honest about that one. Like that is not my 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 gift at all. And you were like, oh yeah, man. Like all we do is we just like we chill out. We just knock on these doors a little bit and we just start these conversations, and all of a sudden someone's handing you their credit card, and I was like. It's easy. Why? It's easy. Why can't I do that, right? Like, I'm so over here talking, trying to practice all the things we've been taught, like, okay, so like this high, and then like out here, and I was like, if it was acting, I was like the worst actor. I'd be like a, a reality star compared to like an A-list celebrity. That's, you were the A-list. I was like the reality star trying to act who has no career ahead. So <laughs> tell me, tell me like how, how exactly has selling worked for you? I mean, you went and you spent some time in South Africa uh, doing yeah. a, a mission for, for, the, for your church. Uh, you've been back though, so clearly something good's happening there. Now as the VP of sales, so uh, take me through this. Like, what is it, Scott? Is there a magic formula for this, or, or how is it? I guess how is this happening? <laughs> it's it's cliche. Life is sales. Everything is sales, and um, it's something that I've had to really work at. Uh, it didn't 
necessarily come like supernaturally, but I, I witnessed it and, and I was a part of it and it's grown on me um, moving forward. And I think it really, at the core of it, sales is just being genuine and wanting what's best for somebody else and then allowing them the opportunity to, to see how your product or whatever you're offering is a benefit to their life. It isn't, a, mm. it isn't there for everyone, but if you can be genuine and properly, and your product is to, to bless them away, um, it, it just happens naturally. And so I think it's the genuineness and, and the sincerity behind me that really spells and, and people can feel, and, and that is a real thing. Um, you mentioned South Africa and what I do there. I found myself, a couple years ago, I wanted to help uh, return missionaries for my church that were local in, in Africa. I opened a uh, uh, cosmetic uh, oil manufacturing company, and within the, the region of Botswana, South Africa, I wanted to help return the missionaries to uh, earn a living because unemployment's so high there, they just didn't have the same opportunities. But they had acquired the skill as missionaries of, of speaking with people and helping them. And so I wanted to, to bring that and, and provide them a way to provide for themselves. And so with the oils, I, I would set up booths at local malls and I would work with them, teach them skills and um, sell oil to and that's legit. Africans at, uh, at local marts within South Africa and, and Botswana. And it was an interesting moment. I found myself um, rubbing the hands of, of Africans, telling them how beautiful their hands were. <laughs> Sparkly and clean. And, I love it. And, and angelic. Um, and I realized that this is fun. This is this is what I want to be doing um, is helping people. And uh, whether it was the the return missionaries that I was working with, or whether it was the the consumers that were uh, trying to make buying decisions, everything just comes back to um, where your heart is and what you want uh, for them. And so I, I did a lot there. And that has spurred into uh, door to door um, as long as that lasted. And now that's what I love the most about what I do here at Nozani is genuinely we are blessing people's lives and we're helping put food on the table for small businesses. And so it's that type of impact, it's that type of why that motivates me day in and day out to, to go and, and do my job and work, wake up with uh, excitement, uh, kind of a fire in my belly to to make sure that everybody knows that they have access to these great resources that we provide. So you, you talk about these results and the things that you're doing with Nozani, and I said that right. No, Nozani. Nozani, my gosh. Yeah. Okay, Nozani. So, <laughs> we'll get it. So tell me exactly what is Nozani and uh, and how is it that you're blessing people's lives and putting food on their tables? And like, what is the company doing as a whole and, and what are you doing in the company to to push that forward? Good question. So Nozani is set up as a full-blown Amazon management and optimization service. Okay. So a lot of people, they don't understand how complicated Amazon is. From a buyer side, it's really easy, really convenient. You got your package in two days, it's great. If you've sold anything on Amazon, you realize that that's not the same story. There's a lot of uh, trickiness that goes into it. There's a lot of management, there's a lot of uh, pitfalls and, and things that that small businesses, um, they just don't have the resources or the know-how to really understand how to navigate those different pitfalls. And so our role, we've developed kind of an assembly line approach where we have departments that specialize in each area of e-commerce. So photography, graphic design, keyword research, uh, content writing, PPC management, uh, some social media, and then an account manager who acts kind of like a, like a conductor of a choir and works with the different departments and in conjunction with our clients to ensure that oh, all the different aspects are brought together so that they can have a full comprehensive Amazon experience and they can be optimized to increase uh, conversion rates, they can increase their searchability so that more traffic is coming to them, uh, both paid and organic, and that everything is just uh, on par. And then um, the management of it, so our account managers working with Amazon, handling the day-to-day, inventory, things like that, to ensure that their life is easier, things are more efficient, we're able to increase traffic, increase conversion, increase sales, and uh, it just works all around. And then with this assembly line approach, uh, provide them better service than hiring someone in-house and do it at a cheaper cost. And so it just makes a lot of sense uh, for small and medium-sized businesses to go with us because we're able to leverage um, our time or their time and, and resources. They can make higher level decisions, focus on other areas. We're going to handle the Amazon and make sure that that's 
um, uh, fully optimized for them. So before you get into your role then, so tell, yeah. tell me this, like for those listening, what are the pitfalls of Amazon? Because stand like typically, I mean, not typically, but like I've seen so many of these courses, right? It's like, hey, here's how to sell on Amazon. Uh, clearly, if there's a lot of courses, one, you'd people do need help. But two, is it overplayed? Is it done? Like, should people still be selling on Amazon? Because by the time that people are really doing courses, it also is a time to kind of look and go, uh, maybe that's not the path to be on because people have already gone through and figured out how to dominate this area. Uh, so one, is Amazon still key? And two, what are the pitfalls if people are still interested in, in going into it? Yeah, Amazon's more relevant than ever, right? It's the big beast. Uh, we've seen that in their stock price. It's, it's going bonkers. And there's always either more niches that you can identify or areas that you can exploit. And that's one of the reasons why we're blowing up is because we're exploiting that. So to give you an mm -hmm. example, um, in terms of optimization, you go through and you look at many different listings, um, the, the photography, they're still in an Amazon 1.0 experience where it's just some white background photos. You're just another product on a shelf. And so what we do is we actually have a portfolio of models um, oh. that we utilize to generate lifestyle imagery. So we go through, we do the research, we understand who's purchasing the product, um, from competitors, things like that. And then we give you the competitive advantage um, through creating a better presentation that's identifying um, who you're, you're selling to, uh, what pain points your product's gonna solve, and, and why they should make that uh, buying decision. And really speaking to them on an emotional level rather than just uh, capitalizing on the, the golden clients. And so that's just one tiny, tiny piece of, of what we do and, and how we help uh, our clients gain a competitive advantage and, and introduce more of an Amazon 2.0 experience. Wow. Uh, pitfalls, there's there's lots. Um, a lot of people see what the, the big group is doing and they, they mimic that. Uh, the white background photo is, is one small yeah, example. Yeah, it's the, it's the, the front end part of the funnel that you can see it versus like understanding like the complex background. You know, it's like a exactly. tip of the iceberg. You're like, oh cool, I see the iceberg, but you, you don't see what's building that up and it it is so much on that back side so there's a lot on the the tangible front side but on the back end there's a lot of pitfalls when it comes to your inventory um if there are uh, one big example that some of our clients have run into is unfulfillable inventory or inventory that went out to someone they returned it it can actually still be sold and so Amazon will go mm. and they'll sell it under your listing and if they do that then they can actually hijack your listing um, if you're not oh, carefully whoa. monitoring um, those types of things. And so we monitor that, we ensure that that doesn't happen. Um, there's lots of inventory issues. There's lots of, they, they just made an update change with their enhanced brand content section that if you aren't um, in this world, you aren't getting a notification from Amazon. They just make these changes and that's gonna affect your, your SEO your uh, rankings and things if you, your competition's changing and you aren't. And so we monitor that, we make sure that everything's updated um, and taken care of. And um, any of the day-to-day -day with Amazon, there's always problems with listings and links and um, there's just a lot that goes into that. And so we handle that for our clients and ensure that they are in the best position moving forward because we're dedicated to it and that's what we do day in and day out. We manage nearly a hundred million dollars um, of product on Amazon currently. Wow, and you guys are, are new, right? You're like, you've been out for started, what, a year? Yeah, we started May 1st of 2017. Jeez, so, I mean, did anything build up before that or like May 1st, you're like, you know what, let's just go ahead and and, uh, and do this. Was there a launch into it? Like you, you started kind of kind of playing around with, with the space or you're like, you know, I think we could do something. And then once you launch, like, what was your expansion? Like, how did you guys do that? Good question. So I actually didn't come on till tail end of September. So it's it's been a shorter road for me. The co-founders, Thaddeus and Kyle, uh, they have experience in sourcing and working with Amazon. They've been doing that for a long time. Um, and they kind of explored or they didn't, they thought they were gonna be more of a private label company rather than okay. a company leading up to May 1st. And May 1st is when they decided, hey, there's an opportunity here in the management aspect of e-commerce, let's do that. And that's mm -hmm. when Nozani was kind of born. And um, that's when the launch happened. So there's a lot of experience and things that, that came along the way. 
And then I came on tail end of September. Um, we, they had been kind of meandering still just trying to figure out um, how to generate leads, how to get involved, how to, how to really exploit the opportunity. And when I came on, um, it was a lot of going through like Indeed listings, things like that, um, job listings, just basic uh, cold calling, stuff like that. And uh, we had to totally revamp the way we were generating leads um, and really double down on our sales techniques in, in process. over time we've been able to, to really explode in terms of our growth and things are just rocking and rolling at this point and and year two is going to be absolutely massive just blowing up huh yeah so now yeah, take me good. through your your role on this so you came on in september what have you been doing and uh and where are you going with it in your position yeah so i've kind of worked my way up when i came on there were five other sales guys and i was not brought on to be the guy i came on part-time just to network and i really really liked um, the, the people that we had on board here. So Thaddeus and Kyle, the co-founders, are both 22 and 23, Jeez. so young guys. And that motivated me, because as an older guy, um, I was 24 at the time, um, I was like, what the heck? I've, I've never been outdone by somebody younger than me. And then It sucks, another, I'll be honest with you, it sucks. I've yeah, seen it, 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 like I got to 28, and that's when all of a sudden I noticed it was like, success, 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 and I was like. What am I doing? We gotta change something up here. And so I felt like I needed to, to get to know these guys, right? And then we had an investor come on, his name's Travis Thorpe. Um, he was the, the founder and CEO of Boostability, which is one of the bigger SEO companies okay, yeah. out here. And, and so he came on and he's advising, bringing more of like the, the expertise and, and the experience in scaling things. Um, and so when I came on, it was, it was part-time, just a network, try and figure things out, see how things were going. And um, I decided to, to drop out of school at BYU because the opportunity cost was just so high. Things were going. Um, it was one of the easier sales that, that I've experienced because it just makes so much sense in terms of what we do and how we've established the business model. And, and the fact that I could work with great people and where we were going, it just seemed too expensive to stay in school. Um, and so I just dug in and this is, this plays off of one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever heard is um, whatever you want to get out of something, make sure that you're you're putting uh, that much in. So the more that you put yeah, in, you're going to get that much. You're going to get that much more out, uh, and then some. And so I wanted to put everything I had into this opportunity. And so I kind of grew um, through the ranks. I instilled a lot of different processes. I built out the sales process, more lead gen with email marketing and uh, website land like that um, and then helping to, to train other sales guys that came on and I kind of grew into this role of, of VP of sales where now uh, I'm still overseeing a little bit of marketing stuff we, we finally hired on some more marketing guys uh, to, to head that up and focusing more on on the training and development of our sales reps and then still having to, to sell the most myself uh, <laughs> week in and week out lead the charge and and push um, Nozani forward and so moving forward uh, we'll continue to do that hopefully I can wean off a, a little bit and focus more on recruiting and and um, and the training aspects because that's what I really really enjoy is, is being able to sit down and, and see the progression um, of, of sales guys and and um, and help them to, to continue to grow and um, I, I think the sky's the limit for a yeah. whole um, yeah that's legit you've got you've got a lot of good training because uh you trained me when you were like 19. I was like four years older than you. I was like, this this kid can freaking sell. I'm sorry as a bad trainer. You were good. I just didn't have <laughs> the ambition to be a good salesman. Let's just put it that way. That was not my thing. I was like, you know what? I like the it's idea where I don't talk to people and I just like present Influence them with them. something. Like, here's something. Would you like this? But I don't talk to them. It's like presented through a whole bunch of series and later what's called sales funnels and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I, I went and invested all my time into that and we call that marketing. So that's, uh, anyway, so I'm a terrible salesman is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, well, you got, you got good friends in us. <laughs> so tell me this, Scott. So yeah. you, you're seeing like, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing like you're, you're on your way up, but 
there's got to be this breakthrough that's happening. And tell me before there's like a dip, right? And I know you got to push through that dip. You've made a kind of a, a crazy decision in today's world of just dropping out of school. I know a lot of people might uh, kind of scoff at that idea and being like, oh, how, how, how's he going to survive in the future? I mean, well, boy, dude, if you freaking produce and just like, you can sell. who the heck cares what, what a piece of paper tells you, you know? I mean, unless it's a Benjamin, then, then you got a lot of those. That, that paper tells you exactly what you can do, right? <laughs> um, but tell me this. What was, what was this like, the reality behind this whole thing? Where um, either you had to make like a, a harsh decision that said, yes, like I've got to make these choices. Or, uh, or even like a low moment that said, I need to change something here. Like take me through that moment yourself. Yeah, I think when I realized that everything depended on me, mm. like no piece of paper is going to make you money and the amount of money you make in a way is a reflection of the value that you're adding in the marketplace, right? And yeah. so when I had that, that firm realization that it doesn't, matter what outside forces there are or um, specifically the college degree thing like it's it's on me and I got to go do it I got to make it happen um, that is that can go one of two ways for people that can be extremely empowering and that can also be very debilitating mm. and um, I think it's really important to, to make a gut check and, and see which type you are and that will determine what type of leader you are and and what type of impact you're going to have in the world and and i decided at a young age that i wanted to have an impact like i had a deeper why and that's what motivates me to to go out and work every single mm -hmm. day and as as hard as i can because it's all on me i have to make it happen and nobody else is going to do it for me and so um, there's been lots of, of pitfalls there's been lots of hardships there's been lots of things that have gone wrong um, whether it was with my my Africa business or, or some other uh, ventures I've I've gone through, or sitting on the curb knocking doors, like that is as low as you get. But then it's you low. Realize, I, yeah. I there were days I sat on that curb and just watched motivational videos, the the pump up ones. Yeah, so it's it's all on you, and and um, you have to get up, you have to knock the doors, you gotta you gotta make it happen. Otherwise. Um, you're just going to be left by the wayside. The, the market doesn't care. We'll be right back to this interview with Scott Fleming. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the show so far. If you've been a listener since the beginning, uh, you know that what I've been trying to do is to share as much intellect and knowledge as possible, but I'm not always experienced in every area. So one of the things that I've been trying to transform this podcast into is where I can interview people who are those experts, who have the experience knowledgeable and can be able to pass it along to you. Sometimes it's also important to meet up with these people for your own business and have them coach you along because you don't have the time nor the skill set yourself to accomplish of where your business should go. If you know someone or you yourself are someone like this that wants to be on the show and has a message that can be beneficial for the listeners, I'd love to have you on. Go over to conversionmarketingradio.com forward slash interview. Fill out a few of the details and let's find a time to get you on the show and spreading your experience and your knowledge with the rest of the listeners here. Look forward to it, guys. And now back to this awesome interview with Scott Fleming. You, was there an aha moment, like something that said, you know what, if I do th this, like if I do X every day, or if I do something, it's gonna change the way that this whole thing works. Was there a moment like that, or, or did it happen over time? Yeah, I think it just happened over time. I, um, I, I remember at some point, where I wanted to go to bed and be able to look myself in the mirror and say, I did my very best today. And that's a, it's a little thing, but it's a big thing. And if you are able to do that each and every day over the course of time, um, that adds up to very, very big things. And so I, 
I every night want to be able to, to go to bed and, and look myself in the mirror and say, hey, today, whether it was good or bad, I did my absolute best. And if you can be um, consistent in that uh, success, you'll have it no matter what. And so uh, that's, that's something that I've always held on to. That was a realization I had a couple of years ago and something that I want to, to continue to, to hold um, to ensure that I am on the, the right track moving forward. Man, that's legit. Does that makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, the thing that I, I really admire about you, Scott, is how sincere and genuine you really are. And like, uh, you've always been that way, like through and through, from the day that I met you to you know catching up now, like years later, you're you are truly like true and true, like just sincere, right? Um, but I gotta ask, like, when you're selling, do you feel like you could sell anything or do you feel like you uh or do you feel like that would might like could compromise in that sincerity like does that ever affect like is there ever a a, a challenging time where you're like you know i want to sell i could sell any product but as long as it's sincere is there products you wouldn't sell or, or would you compromise on the sincerity no i i think i think there are a couple of different great salesmen that that can sell anything for me and the way that i sell um through questions through self-discovery um it does need to be something that's good quality it does need to make sense and it needs to be something that i can stamp my name on and and be behind and so could i sell anything no absolutely not and um Frankly, I kind of hate that question in like sales interviews where they like sell me this pen. I'm like, oh, it's, it's sell me stupid. this pen. pen. Yeah, <laughs> and it's so cliche. Um, instead, and this is why I've come to absolutely love Nozani, and I think I've really thrived, is because I can create win-win situations, and I can help them, even if they're a little bit turned off to it because I reached out via cold call or whatever. Um, I can find mutual ground where they understand. Um, that they are lacking or there are areas where they can improve and then I can help them to understand exactly how we fit into that. And so if, if I can be behind a product, if I can work with someone or something that um, I feel strong about and I can help others to feel that same emotion um, through my tonality, through the way that I'm speaking, through um, the questions that I ask, that is what brings success to me personally and I think is is the best way to set proper expectations for consumers and um, have the best clients is if they can make those buying decisions themselves um, and we just kind of act as the guide along that path that road map man that's legit so you, you mentioned something and I gotta I gotta kind of go into that um, I mean the topic that I'm always trying to figure out is the conversion process not the selling process right it's like Conversion is what happens emotionally. Selling is what happens physically, right? It's like I take yeah. out my wallet and I buy something. But like conversion-wise, um, I'm always trying to discover like what is that process? And and you are obviously converted to your company, but how is it that you are able to, uh, I guess, go into a cold call, find the common ground, uh, not be hung up on, or you know, not not upset the person and then help them through that conversion process yourself. Have you kind of figured that one out? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We've built out an entire process regarding that and I'll spare you all the details. But at first, and I've hit on it time and time again, uh, I spend five to 10 minutes just, just asking questions. And so you need to instill a little bit of authority so it doesn't turn into an interview. Um, and, and some mutual ground. Uh, and Amazon's an easy one because everyone wants to increase their sales and everyone wants to make more money. And so that's, it's pretty easy to find some mutual ground there. Um, but once I've, I've instilled, I've built that relationship, that rapport right away, through asking um, questions, I can understand what their goals are, what success means to them, where they're looking to go, what other channels have they, they tried, um, and and create a, a full picture as to them and mm. and their business. And I try and pitch it or ask them questions in a way like I'm talking to say my father-in-law, where I'm not trying to create a need for me or what I do, but um, I, I'm asking questions to, to get to know them and to help them feel like 
I do know them. And then that will make them that much more ready later on down the road when I can offer a solution because I have a whole picture and they do trust me. And so starting off with the questions, really understanding them, talking about our, our process in, in general and what we do and um, citing statistics for Amazon, conversion rates, things like that, talking about the price and our service and then personalize everything to them and building them up through um, soft closes and and uh, building that emotion through tonality, excitement. It all comes down and uh, it, it's hard to, to properly teach it, but if you really feel it, it happens naturally. Um, and people can feel that emotion even through through phone calls and to work with them through for the, the last couple of minutes before you go in for the close, um, the, the hard close, um, to, to really build that emotion up. And so the last four or five minutes of my phone call is all about soft closing um, and quickly going through uh, our process and, and creating the vision of them working with us so that they're, they're making a logical uh, ROI positive decision, but also there's a little bit of emotion to create that mm -hmm. urgency so that they want to get started right away. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I got so two questions. So the first one is, um, is how do you you spend five to ten minutes asking questions? Is this are these personal questions, and then how do you transition from, uh, I guess, just hey, let me learn about you to hey, let me show you why I'm calling. I mean, there's obviously got to be a, a good transition there. And then the other one is, what are your soft closes that like? How do you end a call and say, yeah, you know what? That's a good that that's a good call because I got this kind of commitment out of them. Yeah, so at first, it's more talking about the business. How long has it been around? What's your role in the company? Uh, what's your niche? What's different about your product? You mentioned at the beginning, there's a lot of products on Amazon. Like, why is yours different? And that's a great question because everybody wants to brag about their baby. Okay, and, I like it. And helps them to, to the, the more that they're talk, the more information that they're sharing, the, the greater the trust. And if, I, if they can be sharing a lot of information, that gives me the cue that, that we're in, that we're in a good place. Um, and then from there, positioning myself in a place of authority. Uh, for example, with Amazon, um, going over exactly what Amazon is, what the algorithm is, and what aspects they need to focus on. Not necessarily mm -hmm. what Nozani does, or what we, why it's important to listen to me, but this is Amazon. And give them some more information that perhaps they haven't thought of because then they look at me and they hear me as the authority expert and they're going to pay closer attention. Mm, and I then like from it. there, discuss a little bit more about the products, personalize it, and then build it up into a vision, uh, working with us, what that looks like, what that feels like, um, how uh, that all breaks down, and then going in for a more assumptive close of something like, does that feel like the right strategy for you guys moving forward? And then from there, then you know exactly where in the sales process you need to go back to. If it's a yes, hey, I'm getting payment information right there. If it's a maybe, then I need to, to cycle back and I need to understand better what their pain points are, address those again, continue to soft close, and then go in for another hard close. And that's legit, I was just writing this down. So you've got what is, what's so unique, right? So allow, allows them to talk and, and brag and, and uh, just kind of share what's happening. Um, and then you've also, the other thing I got here is you've got authority of the platform. So not just authority yourself, but like authority of the platform. You're sharing about why, uh, why the opportunity is so great, but you're not saying yeah. Nozani's so great, why Amazon's so great. So they could go off and do Amazon without uh, Nozani, but clearly as the authority, uh, they trust you, you be because you're the one you. who just shared that information with them. That That is powerful stuff. I mean, those people listening in, uh, that is a huge takeaway from this. If you're selling anything, uh, remember what you're selling and, and who you're selling to and, and how it's being sold, right? The authority of the platform, not just your company. Oh, I love that. Dude, that's legit. Um, and I think too many salespeople, they just think about what they need to say, what they need to talk about. And um, I, I, I feel strongly that that is the wrong way to approach a client. And if you can, if you can help them to understand what the opportunities are instead and that you are on the same page as them, uh, it's going to make the, the flow of information that much better and it that much easier to, to convert uh, moving forward. 
do that. That's amazing. So it's coming from the standpoint of legitimately helping, right? You're the sincerity's showing. You yep. you sincerely want to help. What kind of companies are you targeting? I mean, where are you where are you finding interest, or are you just straight cold calling uh, businesses yourself? How's this? How's that process happening? Yeah. So when I started, it basically was opening the yellow pages and <laughs> trying to find. Um, we've matured a lot. And so the, the roots of the business are um, helping small companies to, to be in a better position moving forward. And so um, we have a lot of clients that are doing, uh, that have maybe one to uh, 20 products on Amazon. Um, and they're great. And, and we've built out a, a really important model for them. And as we continue to mature and grow, we are gaining a lot of interest um, with bigger clients. Mm. And I just went and pitched a billion dollar company the other day um, in utilizing our services just because they recognize the resources that we have, the connections that we already have within the e-commerce space. And it, frankly, it's just a lot easier to, yeah. to utilize someone like us rather than bring people in house. You have to worry about uh, benefits and, and 401k and, and paid time off and all these things. Instead, utilize us. There's people here all the time. There's no time off. We're going to make sure that that you're taken care of and in the best position moving forward. So the the roots of the company are smaller businesses. Um, as we continue to grow and progress, we're building out products that are more built for um, the this, the larger clients as well. Oh, I like it. I like that a lot. Um, it, it's such an easy sell, right? When you you show when you're talking of it in that that regard, where it's a why it's beneficial to outsource this rather than uh, have it in-house. And there's there's benefits to having things in-house, for sure. Um, Absolutely. But then at the same time, it's also helpful to go find the experts. So you guys are clearly the experts in this. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, anyone listening in and you selling products, like Nozani, right? So tell me, what's the best way for people to, to get a hold of Nozani? Uh, and like, if they're interested in this or, or moving forward with Nozani as, as, as that third party company. Yeah, and so one way is our website, nozani.com. We're going through a whole revamp right now, but um, our, our first webpage is still up. So uh, nozani.com is a very easy one, shoot an email. Um, or you can reach out to me directly, scott at nozani.com. That's my direct email and probably the best way to, to get a hold of me with directly. Two T's. Two T's, S C O T T. I know that's not that's not a it's a very common name, but guys, Scott with Don't two screw T's. Screw it up. <laughs> could be a million dollars decision. It <laughs> could be a, could be more than that, right? <laughs> um, Scott, so so let's do this. I, I want to ask you some like rapid fire questions, and uh, just like at a blink of an eye, like what your your first response is. Um, What's the best advice you've ever received? Um, I think what I mentioned before, it's something that I've always held on to, is um, whatever you, you put in to something, um, you're gonna get out and then some. And that motivates me to go 100% all the time in, in everything I, I'm doing. And also to, to, to be there, to live in the moment. Far too many people live for the weekend. That kills me. I hate Friday. I love Monday. Right. Oh, and so you got to join uh, Stephen Larson and I's, uh, or not mine. It's it's his. But he's got this. It's Monday, baby, and he gets all these people to be like, "It's Monday," it's on uh, Instagram stories. You got to join that. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, I, Sunday night's my favorite because I get to wake up and I get to, to go back and do something that I love. And so live in the moment, enjoy life where you're at, and everything that you do, give 100% and expect that you get that much more out of, out of it and you'll continue to progress. And then each night, go to bed and look in the mirror and be able to say, hey, I did my best today. And yeah, if you do that over the course of time, um, the sky's the limit for, for where you can be. I love that. Um, what's the most influential book you've ever read, either for your life or for business or skill sets? I don't read that. Are you kidding? Um, <laughs> most influential book: uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. 
I think yeah. that's all about building relationships. It's so cliche, but um, out of the limited books I have read, uh, it's it's a good one, um, and it's very it's all about being genuine. Well, there's yeah. a reason why it's a classic, right? right? Exactly. You don't become exactly. a classic if it's not beneficial. Yeah. Um, what are you most excited for next? Like coming up? Anything? Um, anything big you guys are doing or in uh, in your oil? How do you? I, Marula. Marula. M-A- Marula yeah, oil. M A R U L A. Take a peek at it. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot going on. There's a ton. Uh, Nozani's blowing up. We uh, we just landed like 200 grand in in funding for the Marula oil in Southern Africa, and so we're building out our facilities there, and we'll be launching here in the the United States pretty soon. Um, hopefully in the upcoming weeks we'll get some oil here and we'll, I'm launching a direct to consumer brand um, for my cosmetic oils um, I've got some other companies that are launching some real estate stuff like there's just so much going on so your I hands hate in different pots huh exactly you got to diversify a bit and, and continue to to blow up so I'm really excited and and long term I'm really excited to to continue to help Nozani scale to be a part of that experience I see where we're going I see the market need I see the opportunities and, and we're, we're going, um, it's going to get there. And then to take all that experience, all my connections that I've developed and be able to ultimately my desires to go back to Africa and, and build small businesses there as they look to develop and, and grow. I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity. And so that's what I want to do long term is, um, is take my experiences here, be able to not only help and, and share it with others, but also make a little money along, along the way. So. <laughs> I'm really the best of every world, right? Exactly. That's amazing. I love it. Um, Scott, it has been a, such a joy and it's such a pleasure to catch up with you and like learn what you're up to and everything. Um, what's the best way? So Scott at Nozani, is that the best way to get a hold of you? And, uh, I guess Nozani, but what about, uh, if people just have questions like selling or uh, this Marula oil, anything else is still, still the same contact? Yeah, it's, that's the best, honestly, Scott at Nozani.com. I've got an Instagram at Scott underscore Fleming underscore. Nothing unique. But uh, if you want to follow me on social, i got a bunch of Africa stuff posted. It's all Africa family and Nozani stuff. So if that's, that's of any great. interest, hit me up there. Um, but yeah, to, to contact me directly, Scott at Nozani.com. And um, if a phone call or something would be beneficial, then I can shoot you my, my details there and we can uh, we can chat. Man, that's amazing. So before we go though, what's the final words of advice for those listening in today? Just go do it. Just freaking do it. Own it. You're in charge. Uh, make it happen. And just be genuine. Be kind. Be um, thoughtful. And uh, to those that really care, to those that are genuine, they will win. And um, go out, take what's yours, but be genuine about it and, and make sure that um, you, your brand, you can stand behind all the decisions that you make and, and the world's yours for the taking. Man, that's legit. Scott, yes. Let's thank go. you so much, man. I, I really I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Um, guys, go catch Scott. Uh, my gosh, he's someone you want to follow and, and get in touch with because he's on the rise. I can see it. I can like... It, it's as clear as day, Scott. You've, you're going places. You're going to influence the world. And I'm so excited uh, for the world to finally catch up uh, to where you're heading, you know? So thank you, my man. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Thank you. Like today's episode? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to have a question answered on the show, head over to conversionmarketingradio.com. You'll see the area there. And I look forward to hearing from you.